Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is God's Church of Love online, our Tuesday chat and fellowship session. The subject's going to be another one of my weird topics. It's going to be an analogy, so I hope you understand what I'm saying as I try to make it plain. Ready, set, go. All right. <laughs> Listen, have you ever walked down the street, had a nice walk, beautiful sunny day, everything's going fine. You may not be wearing your Sunday best or your work best or your church best, whatever, but you're dressed decently and your shoes are in good shape. And the reason I mention your shoes is because, whoops, uh-oh, you stepped in some dog doo-doo. Oh, crap. Gets on your nerves, doesn't it, when that happens? Like, why can't people watch their dogs and get rid of that mess? Well, here you are, all caught up in dog do. And now you got to get that mess off your feet, off your shoe. Now, here's my question to you. What's the first thing you tend to do? You take your shoe off, you scrape it on the curb, trying to get as much off as possible. Then you put your shoe back on and you find some grass and you rub it on the grass and you're scraping it on the cement. You do everything you can to get all the residual nastiness of the stench off of you. You don't want to smell that mess. You sure don't want to track it in your house. Well, now let's flip that over. Let's flip that picture over. Imagine you walk in some dog doo-doo. You keep walking. You don't try to clean it off. You carry that doo-doo everywhere you go, and now you're heading home, and you track that mess in your house, on your floor, on your carpets. Your house is starting to smell because that mess was so thick and gooey, and uh, uh, and you're not doing anything to clean it off. Now, that sounds like something an insane person would do, doesn't it? But do you know we do that every day? We do it every day, and you're wondering, now, how, 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 how do we do that? When you let somebody else's nonsense ruin your day, when you let somebody else's foul attitude screw up your emotional disposition for the day, when you let somebody else's nasty uh, uh, words and nasty attitude and nasty um, uh, countenance rub off on you. Their mess spews off on you and you receive it. You accept it and you walk around because of them with a foul attitude that you didn't even start out with. Your day was beautiful. The sun was shining. The birds were tweeting. It was wonderful. The breeze was flowing through the trees. But now you come to work and a little funky attitude over there is spewing their nonsense, just like the hippopotamus. You know how they do when they want to get everybody away from them? They'll, they'll uh, have a movement, let's say that, and they'll use their tail and fan it so it splatters all over everybody, everything. That's what people do with their attitudes. And you come in to their presence, you're in their surroundings because you got to work together or you're at the store, wherever you are, you're in the presence of a hippopotamus with a bad attitude, fanning it everywhere, and it gets on you. And you don't clean it off and get rid of it and, you know, shake it off, no. Or pray it off, which is the best thing to do. No, you let it stay on you, and you walk all day long with your little nasty attitude because you have received their ugly and you have allowed their ugly to get on you and you have received and adopted it as your own ugly. And you walk around now, your attitude is foul and you're snapping at people and you're fussing and you've got this negative attitude and this negative outlook on the day. And everything is jacked up and messed up and screwed up. And, you know, like we were talking earlier. You know, sometimes the day gets so ugly, you're like, I just hate people. You know, well, we all go through that. But I'm talking about when a person's attitude is nasty and that person is ugly towards you. 
and you turn ugly and you take their ugly and you help them spread it by being ugly to other people around you instead of scraping that crap off of you, shaking it off, praying it off, rebuking it. No, you give in. They nasty to me. I'll be nasty to them. And now they been nobody else been not mess with me today. I'm in a butt kicking mood, Jack. And you just go all day long. You got that dog doo doo all over you. You're walking it and spreading it. Everything you touch, there's doo 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 doo. You're just smearing it everywhere. It's your attitude. Now you can allow people, the devil circumstances, whatever you want to call it. You can allow all of that to sour you if you want. Or you can repossess your land and say, uh-uh, no, no trespassing here, buddy. You can drive the enemy out and have a nice day and enjoy your sphere of influence. You can knock that stuff off of you like water off of a duck's back. That's your problem. As they used to say back in the day, sounds like a personal problem to me. Taint got to be mine. Hmm. So, listen, I know you guys have probably heard this expression. My name is Wes. I'm out of that mess. Yeah, don't get caught up in other people's mess, you guys. Don't get caught up in foul attitudes. Don't get caught up in nasty disposition. That's their problem. I had... Oh, I had a woman one day. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I mean, I had to shake it. Oh, I had to shake it. Because mm. I wanted to kick some booty. And it wasn't a big deal. It was just the principle just annoyed me. And I said, nah, nah, nah. Don't waste your energy dwelling on it. I had gone to the bank. I did my business. And it got through. Coming out the bank, I opened the door, getting ready to walk out. Well, there was a woman about 50 feet away from me. I could have walked out, gone on about my business. Didn't hurt her to open her own door. But I felt nice that day. So I stood there and waited for her. And waited for her with the door open. And waited for her. She finally comes through the door. She did not acknowledge me. She did not look at me and smile. She did not say thank you. Oh, Mama Sita wanted to say a thing or two. And I said, you know what? Let me get my hiney hips on over to my car, mind my business. That's her problem. Her attitude, her whatever that is that she's got, her rudeness, that's on her. That does not have to come home with me. That doesn't have to get in the car with me. Leave it alone. Ain't even worth thinking about it. And I had a nice day. But I was afraid if I gave it credence and said something about it to the lady, like, it would have been nice since I waited for you to open the door, which she didn't ask me to do. You could have returned the favor by just saying thank you. At least acknowledge when someone's being considerate to you. But I'm thinking if you go there and she gets ugly, nah, don't waste your time. Leave it alone. And I had a nice day. Now, there are some times when you have to leave things alone. You can't even confront them. Because if you confront them, I'm telling you, things can go south in a New York second. Forget the minute. So we have to, those are times, you know how the Bible says, don't give place to the devil? That was right there. I could have given place to the devil. Oh, yeah. And see, Mama Sita can get real ugly. And because I know how ugly I can get, I don't give myself the space to play in that area because it's dangerous for me. I'm too explosive, put it like that. And knowing that I can't trust my emotions, I don't give them any room to express themselves. I use what the Holy Spirit gave me, self-control. The Bible calls it temperance. 
you zip that lip and handle those emotions and pray and walk away. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. Well, let me add my two cents. Sometimes no answer, silence, and a good walk, a good exit solves the problem. It eliminates what could end up being a problem, what could end up being tragedy, a disaster. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The next time you get your foot caught in some duty, the next time you're at work, and you got to deal with somebody with a foul attitude. You got to deal with somebody treating you with disrespect, treating you with disregard, treating you with, with contempt. Make sure you remind yourself, this is doo-doo. I'm going to scrape it off the bottom of my shoe and keep on stepping. I'm not going to give it any attention. It's not worth it. They're not worth it. And I refuse to give place to the devil. That's not where I live. I do not live in the devil's neighborhood. I will not play in the devil's toilet like I talked about in the other video. Mm -hmm. And I will not tinker with the devil's toys. I will use what the Holy Ghost gave me, self-control, act in love when someone else is acting in contempt and hate. I will act in love. I will act in mercy when someone else is treating me with disregard. Because that's what Jesus did. The most, let me put it this way, the utmost of disrespect was given to him considering the fact that he was sinless. He was innocent. And they treated him like a criminal. They mocked him, they scourged him, they tortured him, they abused him. Think about it, they disrespected him. The, the ruler of the universe, they disrespected him and he was the one whose hands made them. They didn't get it. And that's why Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. They have no clue what they're doing. They don't even get this. You know, there are a lot of times people are out there, they're caught up in their own sourness. They're bitter. They're angry. They carry the anger from childhood. And there are times when you encounter a person and you think, wow, what a fouled up attitude. But you have no idea that the anger, most anger comes from hurt. It, that's usually where it stems from, hurt and disappointment disillusionment. It turns into anger. Anger festers. Mm -hmm. Ferments. And it doesn't turn into wine, baby. It turns into bitterness. Bitterness sets down a root and the root goes deep and deep and starts to spread its tentacles out into every area of your life. And you end up with a short fuse. You end up with quick temper. You end up with a sharp tongue. Oh, you can slice somebody up like a whoop. Boy, you can slice them up like a machete with your tongue. Why? Because you're not dealing with those emotions. Yeah. So don't let anybody else's mess get on you. You got enough of your own mess to clean out. Now, don't you? We all do. We have enough of our own mess to clean out. Don't allow anybody else's attitude. Don't allow anybody else's anger, anybody else's bitterness, roots of bitterness, whatever. Don't allow any of that to dampen your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You hang in that strength, baby. You hang in that strength. Don't give place to the devil. And don't keep that doo-doo on your shoes. Don't walk around with someone else's crap all over you. No, you shake that crap off of you. Get you a good spiritual cleansing from your Lord and keep on stepping, baby. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.